Now, let's go hunting. Before beginning your hunt, inspect the sea hunter from head to toe, including the headphones, seals, and connections. Test the batteries according to the battery check instructions. And scan several objects to ensure the detector is set to your liking. Any detectorist worth his salt knows how important it is to assess the ground conditions before beginning a search. The search area looks pretty clean, so Monty decides to hunt in standard mode. Beaches often conceal a lot of pull tabs from soda cans, so Monty makes sure that the elimination control is set to ignore signals from pull tabs. Watch how slowly and methodically Monty scans the surface. He concentrates on keeping the search coil one or two inches above the scanning area, being careful to overlap his sweeps. As he sweeps, note how the volume of the audio fluctuates. Small or deep targets generally produce faint, weak signals, while large or shallow targets produce loud, strong signals. Thinking he may have found a coin, Monty digs the spot where he's pinpointed the target. For fun, Monty decides to rescan the area he just searched, but this time in discrete mode. Once again, Monty sets the elimination control to reject pull tabs. As he sweeps, note how quiet the audio is compared to standard mode. Monty gets a pleasant surprise. He finds a gold ring that he suspects was canceled out when he eliminated pull tabs in standard mode. Monty continues his hunt. Hearing another signal, he pinpoints the detected target's location. Notice how he digs slightly beneath the pinpoint location and carefully sifts through the earth. And there it is, a nice chain bracelet to add to his finds. Like all responsible treasure hunters, Monty never leaves a site without filling his holes. Before putting the sea hunter away for the day, Monty gives it a good cleaning, washing off any sand, salt, and residue with fresh water, and storing the detector in a cool place. Now, it's time to admire the day's finds and plan the next hunting adventure.